Hello, insane children, and welcome to yet another crowd design session. This is session number five, in which we are going to discuss the dresses. Apparently, this is the, the dressening. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that joke works, but we do have a collection of somewhere around 18 or 19 dresses, and those have all been shared on the Alice Asylum Wiki, which you can find a link to in the description below. Uh, we're looking in particular at a page that is community ideas that are suggestions for all of the dresses. And so we're going to go through that list one by one. We do have our insane children here with us on Discord, and uh, Discord access is granted to those who are supporting us on Patreon. If you're interested in joining a future crowd design session and being a part of our Discord server, then please go check out our Patreon. Again, the link to that is in the description below. So with uh, all that out of the way, for you insane children who are there in the chat and who are joining us for today's crowd design, do be aware that there is a new and fancy microphone and not just any microphone, it is a bloody microphone. Yes. And if you have something to say and a way in which to say it, in other words, you have a microphone, it doesn't have to be bloody, but it does have to be a microphone, uh, then please use that emoji, that icon in the chat and we will then make you live so that the world can hear your voice and we can take your suggestions and ideas. All right, with that out of the way, uh, I think we've got a couple of mods here. You guys say hello. We've got a, we've got a Martin here as well. <laughs> Hi, hello. It's, that's a Martin. This is a Magus. And, uh... <laughs> and this is an Aster here. <laughs> 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 Alrighty, um, so we are going to start at the top of the list here again. That is for the wiki pages in the description below, and we are looking at in-game ideas and suggestions for the dresses. Um, I've now it seems lost that. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, so the first thing at the top of the list is the chaos dress, and the suggestion has been made that the chaos dress be able to switch between chaos and order, and they have an on and off mode, and it could unlock powers like the shrinking ability in Alice Madness Returns, and then it changes as Alice goes into battle. Um, so maybe let's take a look at the chaos dress and let's figure out how we think all this works and how it fits together. I just posted a link to the chaos dress from the wiki so people can see it. Oh, we're doing that. I should probably bring it up. So the uh, the chaos dress, if you're looking at the image, it is the symbol of the sun and chaos. Um, it uses gold in the alchemical lineup. It uses gold as the metal. And uh, we've written up a description here of it being bloody ripped, patched, sewed a few times, and asymmetrical. I think one of the things that Omri did early on, um, the original chaos dress was actually asymmetrical in that one side was a purplish color and the other side was a white color. I think in the in the version of the image we're looking at now, it's her stockings. Um, you've got one white, one purple. But the dress itself um, is, I don't know if it's necessarily the same kind of yin and yang motif that we'd seen originally. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of curious, what do we think happens when Alice is wearing the chaos dress? And also, when we wear this is another question. When do we see this appear in the game? Hmm. Had we talked question. about that previously? I don't think we have talked about so much as the biggest thing we've always run into is when to get the right. And some of them were kind of, and then the, the pleading dress and the denial dress too. That, um, Alice on Elm Street, maybe the rule changes depending on what she's wearing. I do like, what does everyone think about the toggle? If you see there is like two sides of it, like as kind of was brought up with the hysteria. Should it be toggleable or should it be something in the environment change? Uh, I like the idea that this dress has a mode that it goes into sort of chaos mode and then she's able to unleash uh, lots of special damage as a result. And I, I think that when we had seen the chaos dress with toggleable, toggle a bubble uh, we had said that perhaps all of the dresses could have some sort of toggle ability 
uh, there, Taylor has posted up the original version um, that is that is split, the asymmetrical version. And then another dress, which is the harvest dress, does have a toggle. Uh, can't Hoglet say that ball. either. Hoglitable <laughs> option that has a version that is kind of normal and one that is you know straight out out of a wonderful horror movie. Do yeah. you think then? I guess. Should we kind of look at having all dresses have like a multi-mode like that then? Like as a general concept for some of these? Well, it, it was something that was suggested, um, you know, again, I don't know that they all lend themselves to doing that. And I think maybe our cosplaying friends uh, would feel we, we're overburdening them <laughs> with all these different types of dresses. You know, I think uh... that, I think that the, um, the harvest dress that's been brought up here by Magus, the death dress, that toggle, it's like it's the dress itself has been sort of brought to life or activated. So you could imagine that it's the same dress, only it's it's in a sort of different physical state. Um, whereas the toggle for the chaos dress, I don't know how you'd, you'd sort of pull that off as one dress without actual literal magic in the world. Um, and I think one of the things we might want to stick with in terms of the dresses is that if you know, if we end up trying to do two states per dress, then it's going to be literally impossible for somebody to wear a dress that, that can do states, unless it's the kind of thing we see happening here with the harvest or the the the, uh, the death dress. And you know, that, I the can imagine. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. You are right. And um, I, think, uh, I think you're also right in trying to have it wear the toggle bull. I'm, we just cannot say that. <laughs> At least I can't is something special for the dress. You know, that is the, the harvest dress. It's kind of like the reaper dress where it's like, okay, she's pushed to that end. Yeah. Um, I, I'd say for right now, we maybe we stay toggle, but coming back to the chaos dress, um, one of the, one of the larger questions I would have is that where in the, in the timeline does that dress actually appear because there is this spreadsheet i don't know if that's been put up on the wiki yet but it outlines the narrative timeline her journey and i don't recall that we've really created a space where you know she's straight up into like a whole chaos zone and that uh, a dress would be appropriate mm -hmm. a, a unique dress would be appropriate in that zone am i wrong about that I don't think we would be wrong with that. And again, just like in uh, Madness Returns, each level having a dress does work. Yeah. And I do yeah. see Jacob saying that maybe certain ones can be gathered in the game and spread out like NPC parts. Right. But he threw up the mic wanna... emoji though. If do you want to talk, yeah, Jacob? Let's bring him, Jacob. Let me bring him. Okay. Are you ready? Hello, Jacob. Can you hear us? Hey, yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. A little bit louder, oh, yes, but we yes. Can. Okay. Um, so, like the the idea I had was that maybe, like uh, certain like buttons or something like that could be swapped out on Alice's dress. Maybe like the different um, alchemical signs in her pockets could be like restitched, um, and maybe even hollow eaves on her back, like you know the bow, could be like retied into a different knot. Like you could go to an NPC, and you give them. Um, these parts that you gather throughout the game, uh, stuff like that, like patterns for it or something. And you give them the dress or you, you give them a plan and then they'll put together the dress for you. They swap out certain parts or something. And then um, like you get different effects based on whichever parts you, you give them or whatever. But then if you match just the right ones together, like maybe you'll get the blackening dress or you'll get, you know, depression dress or something like that. And you get like these, these like sets of effects and like maybe they could have like different modes, like the chaos dress. Um, like it could have the order half and then the chaos half. And then like maybe you activate its ability by doing like a combo in combat. And then you you activate randomly the chaos mode or the order mode, and you get like a buff for a short time or something like that. Like they could all be implemented um, in this way, where like you kind of just customize your own dress, and if you get it just right, you get this special cool effect, and it give a whole bunch of like um, passives or something like that, or these effects that are suggested on the wiki. Kind of like um, like the, the charm system in Hollow Knight was really good. 
Um, like all of these charms have their own thing going on and none of them are particularly overpowered, but if you match just the right ones together, you get this neat little effect that, you know, there's interaction between certain charms and it was kind of really fun to find those. Um, but then using them too, it's also felt really good. I think it's a good, um, kind of basic structure. I, one of the things I think we want to figure out is does that connect into the dresses or like we've discussed in the past, maybe she's collecting alchemy symbols. Um, and then those are being put together, like say in the sense of a, like charms as you, I, yeah. I kind of think that we, because we're going to be swapping dresses around quite a bit and it's almost that the dress swapping is more of a, more of a visual thing with perhaps one dress and domain specific kind of superpower or unique power. Um, but that the kind of thing that the player is going to be willing to pick up, play with for a, a section of the game and then put away and not feel limited or feel cheated. Um, maybe these charms it, it could be separate from the dress. Um, they could be a necklace that she wears. They could be a bracelet that she wears. They could be something she slots in, um, somewhere does that make sense yeah i did have um, the patch idea i'm sorry i didn't want to sorry jacob <laughs> oh no well i mean like i i think that's okay but like i i feel like in that game where you get to this certain part of this game where you have this cool effect like you know the blackening dress or the harvest dress something like that and you get this effect that's really fun to play with and then you move on from there and if you don't get to play with it again it's kind of like disheartening because then you don't want to leave that area because then you're going to go to somewhere else that now you feel less empowered or something like that and you'll never be able to touch that part again you have to restart the whole well, game we we i mean in madness returns we had it so you'd wear a dress for an area and then you would change isn't isn't that right yeah, yeah. And right. dresses didn't provide any powers but with right. this game if i'm not mistaken we're going to be able to go back to levels so even if we have addresses a level specific, once you beat the level, you can go into other realms with that dress. Well, we don't know that yet. We don't know. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I, I mean, that's that's one of the basic rules, I think. And I think that's to Jacob's point is, you know, I think one of the basic questions about dresses is exactly the point you just brought up. And that's probably one of those things that we should put a very fine point on, even if it's um, even if it's just for now, but just to keep ourselves straight on, you know, okay, so are dresses realm specific, yes or no? Do dresses carry special abilities, um, yes or no? You know, and of course that then turns into the question of if they're not realm specific, it means you can take those special abilities to other realms. From the, the puzzle and level de design perspective, um, that can become quite tricky or it could mean that a dress is essentially a key that you carry back to a place that you previously couldn't access because you didn't yet have that dress. None, none of these is necessarily good or bad, we, but we do need to make a decision. Uh, when we're... Yeah, that's like classic kind of modern-esque gameplay, isn't it? You know, you're in an area, but there's a, there's a wall covered in vines and you can't get right. past it until you've got the fire dress. And now you can shoot fireballs. Yeah. So yeah, the dress as a key, a, a power key, I think uh, that's fairly ingrained in uh, gameplay lore now as a thing. So I think people would probably take to that quite well. Uh, any last thing, Jacob? I think... Uh... Yeah, I, I mean, I think that the whole kind of like Metroid style of uh, like using the dresses as keys to get the different... This is a really good idea. It's, it's always really fun to be able to you know, see an obstacle and then later on be able to surpass it. it. It gives a sense of progression, which is kind of, you know, what Alice's goal here is. She's trying to get better. Um, and, you know, the better you are mentally, like, the stronger she should be in her own, like, mind space. So, you know, having that sense of progression also kind of, like, for the player, is also kind of links in with Alice's struggle. You know, she's getting better, she's getting stronger, she's making progress in her um, through her damage. Oh, I mean, this is this is one of the things, though, that we have, for instance, uh, one of the dresses is called a denial dress. And it kind of communicates that she's in a state of denial. And at some point, we want to move beyond that state. And so is it 
reasonable that she moves beyond the denial stage, but she takes with her the denial dress. I, you know, again, it's Wonderland, it's all magical, so maybe we don't have a logical for that, but it's it's something to consider. Right, yeah, like, uh, well, I mean, like, certain dresses could, like, maybe in the beginning you could stop the dresses that give you, you know, uh, detrimental effects, like the denial dress. Maybe it hides certain things from you in the beginning, and then once she moves on and she gets the classic blue dress or something, you go back and you see a bunch of things that weren't there before, or you can see through certain secrets or illusions or something um, that were previously just things that she just didn't want to see or she was hiding from herself. One thing that I'm sorry to interrupt real fast, people are bringing up is New Game Plus having the dresses available, at least if you replay the game. Again, like the Metroidvania or just Metroid style or Mega Man having abilities open up that important aspect too. Yeah. Well, there's there's two very different types of game um, we're talking about here. You know, one is per domain, a dress. Maybe that dress has, say, a swimming ability that's really only useful in that domain. And so we, we discard the dresses as we move through the game. Uh, the other option is, you know, as we've said, you carry the dresses along with you and you take these abilities along with you and those abilities can be taken back and forth to realms where, you know, maybe there was a water puzzle you couldn't gain access to until you've got that dress. So uh, it, you know, it's, it's a, and then like I see someone here, Bella, the game is um, you know, dress, a dress to an area. Um, this is true if we're talking about a linear story, um, but we have also discussed the possibility that there's open world elements uh, to the the adventure that she's on, the ability to travel back and forth, which is something we did not have in the previous Alice games. And and frankly, maybe it's something we shouldn't have in this one. Maybe that's going to be biting off more than we can chew. Well, again, thank you, Jacob. Thank you. For joining us. I'm going to move on, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess that... Uh... That question is something that can be answered once we know more about uh, funding and publishers and such. Yeah. Uh, well, yes and no. I mean, I, I would prefer that we go ahead and we go ahead and lock this down. I think that's Again, important. even if it's yeah. even if it's only temporary, because there's so much dependent on this. So, I think this is a question of you know where how do we want to see this working? Um, I think given that we have suggested it's going to be, there are going to be some open world elements. Um, and we, you know, you guys have talked about the sort of Metroid Samus uh, version of the suit. Why don't we go ahead with the idea that you acquire a dress and then as you move forward, um, you're able to have access to that dress still um, in later stages. If I don't, if I remember correctly, we're talking about having a central hub, like a mirror realm, too. So that way we can have the aspect of changing the dress in a central area and then going into the level. So that way it's you, you get the dress in the particular level, and then once you have it, once you overcome that level, you can then use the dress wherever you need to use it. That might open up new paths, such as in the, the Detroit style. Right. Is right, that right. what? I guess... Yeah. Why don't Why don't we go ahead with that for now, and okay. um, that way it just gives us a, a framework to build on top of. Because with the rest of this, um, the rest of the questions we're going to run into, if we haven't answered this, at least penciled it in, uh, then it's not going to. Um, we're We're going to have a lot of problems having any discussion. Sounds good. So, linear story with the ability to go back and unlock elements again, Ala. Yes. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Okay. Okay, and so anyway, back to the question. Yeah, and back to the, I was going to say, just well, yeah, for people any... that are joining us, if you have a mic and are willing to talk, please throw up the microphone emoji so we can know that you have a mic. Thank you. Okay, so if we go back to where we started here, which was the chaos dress, um, I... I want to say I'm not certain that I know where this fits into the game just yet. Um, I would I would push this to the side of our pile of potential dresses. Um, now I'm looking at the timeline, the spreadsheet of the the narrative timeline, 
And, you know, the first place that she goes to is um, after denial, which obviously we have a dress for that. She goes to the area of the game that's owned by the Queen of Hearts. And that is, that is marked as chaos because it's sort of at the center of the little solar system that, that we were turning Wonderland into. And that is ruled by chaos. And I think, um, the, you know, the element there is gold um, as well. So it may be that we we have reason to give her that dress for this section of the game. Um, but then we need to come up with sort of what is the ability of that dress, given that at this point in the game, you wouldn't want her to be super powerful. And chaos sounds like a, a pretty powerful ability. Well, I was thinking when I was looking at the design of it has the purple or the gold, whichever color, as you're fighting, maybe it turns into that white. So your combat ability, you can see it getting drained off because she's still learning how to do that. So it gives you a visual representation of, okay, step back, I'm I'm losing my effectiveness. Okay. I, again, um, just an is idea. There a, Anyone else is, have a better idea than I do? <laughs> uh, I'm Sorry. just trying to think, is there something that... that um clearly links into the concept of chaos no. and and again remembering that at the at the center of the queen of hearts domain where she's set up her kingdom essentially and where we see that wonderland has been blown apart uh chaos kind of rules uh, maybe we need to figure out what that means in terms of what alice sees in the environment around her and why a dress that is also called the chaos dress would make sense. So it could be that this dress, it, it's changing very often. It's changing Alice or it's changing her ability to attack, um, but it's doing it in a unpredictable and a chaotic way. Um, could be that as we're moving through this area of the game, we're seeing the state of things um, flip around and change rather chaotically. I was going to say maybe have it where it allows her to stabilize areas like this area is so chaotic i can't get through it but i have to use the the dress turn it on to chaos mode that allows you to go through this area right yeah i like i like something like that i mean if you were to go into an area where stuff's blown apart um to bring and it's all floating around and dangerous to bring order to that would just simply be to make everything sit still or to make everything go back to its previous state of, and of order and that would be a good toggleable, if I can say that word today. I know we're all saying that, which then plays very well with uh, environmental ability. You know, there's a stairway that's all broken apart in chaos, but you turn on the dress and flatten it out. So the chaos dress could toggle between chaos and order. That'd Correct. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we pencil that in, um, and then we'll just try to explore what we can do in terms of technology to have that concept affect a given area of gameplay sounds good is that that could be interesting you know you, you go to a place you punch up the dress and it it obliterates everything you're completely disorganized and then vice versa um and then that's something to do with the, the puzzle solving or the enemy combat mm. Uh, Jacob says here that maybe the chaos dress literally absorbs chaos. Um, so that could be interesting, actually, is to have a sort of chaos energy source throughout the world. But um, it could be especially dense in this area at the start of the game and that the dress absorbs that chaos and then um, she's able to release it in an act somehow. Hmm. I think, Sounds again, that mixes in with being able to unleash it or, or control it. Right. So, right. yeah, definitely. Yeah, like that. Yep. Well, I guess uh, we kind of got ideas for that. Okay, so let's pencil those in, and then we can maybe move on <laughs> to the next. Yep, spent half an hour on that dress. <laughs> yeah, we just love it. <laughs> Uh, well, it's it's not just that dress. It's the... Um, All in general. The game design that works with the dress. Yeah, I mean, we, we, yes. there's, a very, there's a very big question there about uh, how we present the dresses. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I seem to have lost my place on the wiki to where the dresses or are. Or this dress who I can... For those that are just joining us, we are going over the dresses. And we find us finished one dress. Who? 18 okay. left. <laughs> harvest uh, dress. The harvest, harvest dress. Okay, so the, for those of you watching on or listening, dress is also referred to as the death dress. And uh, this has been shared on Instagram and Facebook. People love this dress. It's basically a black feathery slash tentacly um, sort of inky black dress that Omri did. And in its off state, the feathery tentacles lay at her side. But in the on state, they become active and they tentacle around. And Alice also floats off the ground in a pretty horrifying way. Now, um, this is, again, the harvest dress, but we dubbed the death dress. And this would um, fit into probably the very last stage of the game. Um, we haven't yet decided who lives in that last stage, but um, it's clearly going to be somebody or something um, pretty dark and in need of a, a proper beat down if this is the dress that we're, <laughs> we're using for that. Well, from previous talks, it was the area was controlled by the Jabberwock. Yeah. Um, I've got that. I need to give you guys this spreadsheet. I don't know if I've sent it out. I'll send it to you, Magus, and then you guys can figure out a way to paste it into the um, the wiki. But I've got the Jabberwock living in the fifth area, which is ruled by Mars. Um, okay. It's um, the seventh area. I haven't, I don't know that we've really, but it could be the Jabberwock. It could be the Jabberwock. Okay. Yeah. Get us to there. Oh. I mean, it says here on the image it's in the Jabberwock yeah. world. That's absolutely right. Um, yeah, I think I there's a little bit of a disconnect between my timeline sheet and some of these, uh, the data. Probably that thing is, the... things have evolved and moved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That happens. It happens. Um, so what are some of the ideas we have for the death dress? <sighs> Drops think... some black slime from it and does damage to enemies is what I see on here. Well, the battle dress looks like Shadow Alice's braid, perhaps originally. So I think one of the things we talked about is that the slime that it's dropping is how connected to the ruin that we see later on in the game, uh, in, in Madness Returns. Yeah. And I think we, yeah. we had also said that um, there was going to be the possibility that the ruin is actually, the source of it is coming from young Alice, who by the time we get to Madness Returns, is trapped back in the final stage of Alice Asylum. And that the ruin and all of this is sort of her, the subconscious, screaming out to be released from this, this trap that she's in. Um, so it could make sense that this dress sort of links up with that part of the story. Well, um, I think it actually, I was just thinking about Majora's Mask, where it could be in, in that game, Link gets the final mask and becomes the, the god mode basically for the final battle. So yeah. let this dress be god mode version, final battle, and then allow it to be new game plus. That way you can unlock it and it goes, and you can have fun with it after. Yeah, I think so. But I do like the idea of it being a precursor to the ruin. It makes a lot yeah. of sense with all that goo dripping around yeah. everywhere. Well, and I think this could also be the dress that that young Alice is wearing when she confronts um, essentially her future self. Because again, what we've said about the way the narrative is going to unfold. Spoiler alerts if you've not heard any of this yet, but that if Asylum starts with uh, the Alice of post Alice Madness Returns reflecting back on her childhood and the origin and trying to figure out why she still has this big empty hole inside of her. And then she travels all the way back and she re-witnesses all of the events of Asylum all the way up to the point where she then confronts herself in Asylum. Um, it would be herself perhaps wearing this dress that is back there still fighting but not sure what she's fighting against anymore and be the sort of final showdown between this 
harvest death dress version of herself and her sort of adult mature self. And then that's going to have to go into the, the release and reintegration that ends the story. Hmm. Yeah. I definitely like having it where it does touch on, and we said we don't want to throw, you know, this is from this game, this is from this game, exactly, but having everything would work well, where, as some people said, like, you know, it gives you that, that core of if you haven't played the game, you still know it. It's, again, right. it's, it's not like, we hope we can get a re-release of all the old games, but you never know. And yeah. just having it where, you know, we can showcase that, just looking at some of the yep. things. People do seem to like the kind of having as a final dress, kind of an award too, if I'm not mistaken, as kind of you know the the ultimate power dress kind, the BFG or the blunderbuss. From yeah, I think that's right. Um, it would also be interesting if once you've acquired this dress and before you do that final showdown, you're in a position like you said, to do a kind of BFG run through of all the previous areas and really lay waste to the world. We give the character a sense of frustration or anger or feeling trapped or the, like she can't pro you know, make any progress. Um, and then that's when the sort of adult Alice uh, reappears and says, hey, you know, calm down. There, there is an ending to this story, but it's going to require you do X, Y, and Z thing. And so this this could be kind of the last dress you fly around in just breaking shit uh, like crazy. Uh, Jim of Mountain <laughs> says maybe Sounds a boss good. rush. Um, I like that. I like having a, a boss rush, like, again, going back to Mega Man, where you have the original bosses you fought, and you have to go through and kill them all, but you have the powers now. So you're being able Correct. to just, you know, curb stomp them. Yep, I think that could be interesting. You know, if at the end of the story, if you're in a sort of groundhog a life situation, except she's so powerful that she can just repeatedly curb stomp them, um, but then it, you start to realize that this pattern isn't going to stop until something comes in and stops it, which, which is outside of her experience. And that's where, you know, her future self comes in and says, hey, uh, all right, enough of this. And, um, you know, this this is how you get out of this. I, Al, um, Ancient Child just put something really nice. There is an ending to the story, but it requires your sacrifice. Correct. That is yeah. very well worded. Well, I know the other thing that we're talking about, she's already made the sacrifice and has kind of lost sense of that. She's the adult version of her has made, made that sacrifice, has come back to save her younger self, um, and now realizes that the hard part's already over. And that the younger self simply needs to accept, um, and so I think that you know that that moment of acceptance may be the kind of key aha moment. Um, you know, we've talked about it before. It could be that from the player's perspective, acceptance means simply setting down the controller. You know, that if you continue to fight, well, then you continue to fight. But that if you accept that it's the battle's won, um, then you're able to walk away. I, I want to add to that is we've talked about having kind of the, the controller, the, the mind fuck with the player, literally yes. having them having to put the controller down or not yeah. having any input during that yeah. is, is that acceptance. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, something like that, exactly. Okay, so we know where the chaos dress fits. It fits at the end, and it allows us to run around car curb stomping all the bosses. Um, sounds good to me. Any other thoughts or uh, input on the chaos dress before we move on taking a look the harvest dress i'm sorry yeah, yeah the, the, har the harvest dress. Dress. Like, yeah. <laughs> sorry no, no no all right okay the, the good old uh, octo chicken mildly <laughs> counterintuitive to a lot of people but yep yeah, again, but we want to have a few of those. I, I bring it back up to the Metal Gear Solid, or, you know, Metal Gear, where we, we have the ability to push through just the game design and be able to work with it. Talk yeah. About it. I mean, it's a good point that Octo Chicken makes that it might be counter to ask the players to set the controller down. And so, you know, we'll work through that. We'll, we'll have to fig figure out a couple of different variations on the theme, and we'll test them, and then we'll see what works and what doesn't. And it just also reminds me, though, of uh, on the 
DS, the Legend of Zelda, the Link one, in it you have to actually close the system to continue progress. And that frustrated me because I didn't realize that. <laughs> so it has to be yeah. something you, you are right. You have to make it natural. That's right. Okay, uh, so moving on, the next one on the list appears to be the blackening dress. Mm -hmm. And someone has written here, um, well, first of all, the blackening dress, for those of you following along, again, another one of Omri's uh, really fantastic designs. This is from World of the Moon. This is actually the second area of the game after she confronts the Queen of Hearts in the first area of the game which is represented by the sun um, and the element gold. She moves on to the second area of the game, which is represented by the moon um, and the element silver. And so in this place, um, she acquires this dress, the blackening dress. And Omri has written the description that it's different black materials combined. Um, it's got a Cheshire smile as a necklace, silver riblets at the waistline and a raven skull I guess on the back of the dress. Um, so it looks very feathery and black and um, pretty, pretty damn goth. Yep. Yes. Yes. I love it. Yeah. It speaks um, of. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to, it speaks a lot of a crone aspect and, uh, you know, ravens and things of that nature too. So. Right. So in this, um, in this moment when she acquires this dress, I've also written in the, so the blackening is a stage in alchemy. It's when whatever the elements you're working with are literally, literally black in fire or in, in the flame. And um, I was thinking that in this stage uh, is when we're gonna maybe find the first hint of, or see the first sign of the cruel black dragon, which of course in Wonderland is the Jabberwocky. Um, and then this might also be where she sees or acquires the Vorpal Blade um, for the first time. So, of course, up to this point, she's not had that sort of iconic weapon. And it would be in this stage that she might find that. I like that, but also I think the problem is I think people see the Vorpal Blade combined with the classic dress as kind of the, the quintessential Alice. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying we should yeah. not separate them, but maybe... If they are separate, we need to make sure there's a reason for separation. Right. Um, I'm not sure where we give her the classic dress just yet. It might not be until the very end of the game. Um, we're we're going to have to figure that out. Because when we start off the game, she's going to be in her asylum garb. And then that'll transition into the denial dress. And then it, it continues transitioning. I don't know if we have like in-between stages... Um, I, I kind of thought perhaps that there's some very big celebratory moment at the very end of this game where she transitions into the classic dress. Um, prior to that, do we see the classic dress? I think, uh, again, people have been on the fence all over about whether or not they want it right away or if it should be an award kind of at the end. So we haven't really nailed down where it should come in. But it should be a pre-order bonus that's only available if you buy it through Doritos. Let's <laughs> uh, not. Um, classic blue dress Doritos. Classic blue dressing. Cool ranch cool blue, blue dressing, dressing Doritos. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no. Gonna have dresses uh, that eat kind of tasty snack. We've already got Cheetos. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wow. <laughs> I just took uh -oh. that off topic completely. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I don't know what to what to tell you guys about the classic blue dress just yet. I had it, again had it wouldn't deliver that until the very end of the game. Uh, may, maybe we can come back around and discuss that uh, when we get to that on the list. Hmm. Um, uh, but I I think for this this particular dress. Um, have we thought of, it sounds like there's a couple ideas for some powers that it might have. So uh, written here that allows her to disappear into shadow areas um, and her her attack is boosted in areas of, I guess, moonlight. That'd be cool. That would be, and like have it in kind of the 
shrinking where you can get into areas that you couldn't before with it. So, you know, you can go through a blurry area. And then, especially if it's based on, like, a moonlight habit where your combat is increased. So you might not... This would be a good area to where it might be an area that the enemies are a lot stronger. But if you lead them into the moonlight, you can attack. So that yeah, gives like you the upper lot. edge. So it's like, yeah. if you're in the moonlight, then you can take these things down. Right. And that would be one of those skills or abilities that we drag forward later into the game or back and apply in certain areas, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I like the, the bloody panda. I think the raven wings would be good to give her a higher jump. Yeah. Uh, people are saying it's like contrast, which deals with light. I mean, if people haven't played that. Light and shadow. Yeah. Yeah, I think having this still with light and shadow is a very good good concept for the general press itself. Yeah. Um, I, I want to ask a question here, just as we start to kind of really look into, okay, so here's a dress. If I stand in the moonlight wearing this dress, I'm going to do more damage. Okay. Um, is it our sense that we're, we're running through the game, you know, it's an, it's an hour or two after we picked up this dress, and we're running through the game and we come into an area and oh hey there's some moonlight and hey there's some enemies and we're going to make the conscious decision to hey I, I should switch to that blackening dress because i know that in the moonlight it um it's going to allow me to do more damage that is that where we're going with this i guess it depends on how we set things up but i kind of like that idea but not force it like i look at it kind of the dsx model of if you go full out combat you can just run through an area and kill everything or if you go stealth you can avoid things so you're not forced to deal with either side or you can take either option so, well I, I guess my my question is more basic than that okay um, it is that it feels like i'm gonna be playing the game where i've got a collection of of weapons i can switch between i've got let's just say i've got my corporal blade and i've got a pepper grinder and a couple of other things. And oh, by the way, I've got a closet full of dresses. And I can switch between these things at any time. So um, is the player going to feel at all annoyed or burdened by the fact that they have to mm. keep track of what these various dresses do and switch to the appropriate dresses at the appropriate times? Obviously, like I, you know, I, I play a lot of games where I've got the, uh, the option to put, on, to put on a different bit of armor. There's a lot of times I just don't care. I just, I, whatever. I, I could get a few more extra points of damage out of that other armor, but I'm just going to stick with the one I've got and beat on these guys and continue on. Uh, Octo Chicken Greg says, you know, that I think it would work if it's, you know, way too many dresses. I look at it as where maybe it shouldn't be, you could cycle through them a lot, but maybe it could be certain areas where you can go to her closet, open it up, and select the dress. <laughs> Quite literally, right. open a closet door. Here's the dress. And that way it's not a, I can constantly shift through the dresses. It's more of like, okay, what's going to be in the next level? I see this. You can go back and select the dress or you might plow through. And that well, way, you here's, know, we... here's another, I mean, here's another question. Um, ought this to be automatic? Should it be scripted? You know, I'm running through a level. I've got on whatever the dress was um, that, that I started off this level with, but I move into an area where there's some, some moonlight streaming down now we as the game designers know hey this would be a good place to use that blackening dress and it just morphs it just happens automatically and once we're through that little area it goes back to the dress for that area i actually was just playing devil may cry 5 and in it they actually give you a recommended loadout for one mm -hmm. of the characters when you start and level so i think you don't have to use it but that might be something to look at is like in their closet like this dress is shining or these dresses are, are highlighted as in they might be useful for that area yeah so i don't i don't like forcing people to say you have to use this but giving it I, like hey I, this I, might be i'm oh, sorry i just worry that we're heading into you know alice with loadouts right i mean it's like mm, um, having a I, dress wheel I, <laughs> yeah I'm a, I'm a little bit um a little bit worried about that, which which takes us back to sort of you know forcing the player to have a dress per specific domain. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know maybe maybe we're still leaving this this open uh, for discussion. I think leaving it open 
right now is is important. I think figuring out again, like trying to see load out. <laughs> Uh, look at some of these comments. I think it is making sure that people aren't overloaded. And I agree yeah. that having it where it's a constant, as, as we said, the dress wheel to uh, to go through them. But having it where it's a force, like, okay, there's moonlight. I have to use this dress. So yeah, I think we have to find I a good balance. I don't think it should be have to. But yeah, that's maybe it's saying. better for you if you do. So for the yeah. people that are taking the time to remember what's good and what isn't you know maybe they're only like five or ten percent stronger than they would have been yeah. um you know i mean i see one of the comments here taylor says i hate to say it friends but i think we have too many dresses i mean looking at the way i've broken the narrative down there's only seven major areas which would mean that there'd be only seven dresses and i know we have a lot more dresses in the on the wiki page than that but i think at the end of the day um, we probably want to end up with, with a, man, a manageable number, meaningful dresses as opposed to like lots of different variation. And I think, you know, seven or eight dresses for a game this size, probably not too many. Um, but it still, you know, it still raises the question of um, get to select those, you know, are they selected for us? Um, do we carry them around and they get selected automatically? you know, depending on the location we're in, um, these are all, I think, questions we, we want to try to explore. Reminds me of a bit of, like, I've been playing Spider-Man lately. You know, you kind of have your main story um, suits, and then the rest you right. kind of just unlock during the game, and you can change through them just for fun. Do they have special powers, though? They come with special powers, but you can actually choose whichever dress, uh, well, suit uh, you want, <laughs> and you can change the power to match that so you're never limited so cosmetic only and the, the actual powers you can choose on your own see i i actually think that perhaps that's the way we want to try to go is mm -hmm. that these dresses are are cosmetic only i mean we've talked about them having powers but i don't know I unless think... those powers are unless the dresses are domain specific as well as the powers being domain specific um it might be that we want to allow the powers to carry through the entire game and the dresses, perhaps well, after their introduction, just be cosmetic. Mm -hmm. What I'm thinking of, I just thought of it like this, where we do want to have the ability for the dresses to be used to unlock certain areas. So let's go back with the black hand dress. Maybe there is this moonlight area that when you first go into it, there's no way you can pass because these enemies will just smash your head in. But as soon as you get the ability to fight in the moonlight um, with the power of the moon you will punish them. so <laughs> sailor moon i had to go there so that way it is something an option it's not you're forced to do that that's a side path to find something that you know allows you to open up more of the of the level it's not a requirement to have the dress it just opens yep. up yeah i mean i really like that idea of the dress being a sort of key um that you know you use to open things up it I don't have any argument against that at all. Again, it just comes back down to um, the type of game. You know, is it the type of game where we're going to carry these switch between them? Because uh, that feels like the type of game that has a lot more slowing down, messing around in, in the interface, mm -hmm. uh, keeping track of the inventory, keeping track in your mind of what the various dresses do and why they're useful. Um, I, was... I, I just I think. One of the questions is, is Alice, are the Alice games that type of game? Just, mm -hmm. you know, what, keep in mind, like when the first Alice game was made, it was essentially, let's make third person Doom, uh, you know, or yeah. Quake. Let's like make a really fast run and shooter, you know, run, run and gun and shooter with a decent story and cool art. But like the underlying mechanic of it was just pick up a gun and shoot stuff and then move on and pick up a gun and shoot stuff, right? Um, I think, obviously, by the time we got to Madness Returns, a little bit more was layered on top of it. The question is, do we want to keep layering, or do we, do we want to try to you know, keep, things, keep things simple? Well, I think one of the main concepts we've kind of gone over is having this, as you said, to remember the stages of grief, but also you know, the, the Metroid style of being able to revisit things. So mm. looking at that as kind of a core that gives areas replayability, too. Yeah. I would think one of the um, options... Oh, go ahead. 
I mean, maybe we just need to come down on this that Alice can chase you know, as fast and easy as anybody else with guns. I mean, there's no, there's no reason to say we couldn't just have them, you know, on, on the triggers or um, on the D-pad, you know, just to, you just, da, 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 you're either switching between weapons or you're switching between dresses and they're both done seamlessly, instantly, easily. Mm -hmm. I think or... the jab on the D-pad or like the, a wheel, you know, press L2 to bring up the wheel and then... But then we have the dress we wheel. It. Did we want the dress? <laughs> Well, the, it's, a, it's a serious, it's a serious question. Fast. Yeah, it is a serious question. And if we have um, weapons and dresses, is that too much? And I guess that is something to bring up with the, looking at the chat to see if anyone... Well, you know, and it depends on it depends if the dress is obvious that you're going to do. So, like, you know, at some point, if I put on a dress that was the... I think we have, like, an Inferno dress of some sort. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Just, it's uh, like a fire fiery dress, dress. yeah. Yeah, I mean, so the fire just, that, that's clearly going to, like, when that pops up, you know you're going to be burning shit to the ground. Oh, yeah. Um, and it communicates that idea really clearly. So when you're flipping through it, let's say it's on the D-pad and you're just going right, 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 right. And then that thing pops up. And you're like, oh, yeah, I like this. This is a flamethrower. This turns her into a flamethrower. That's useful here. Um, you know, this might mean also that we sort of pare down the dresses to the point where you've got, very clear specific okay this is my dress i use for long jumps this is my dress i use for catching shit on fire this is my dress i use for stealth and then um that way it it doesn't become a burden to try to recall you know exactly what the various dresses do because we've only got four main things mm -hmm. that they do off of four well, main dresses what i'm thinking of is maybe doing it where you have I hate to say loadout, but in the sense of when the level starts, you choose your three dresses, and maybe the level gives a description of in this level you might run into X, Y, and Z, or if you're replaying the level, you know you'll run into X, Y, and Z, so then you have those dresses in your wardrobe and ready. You're not hoggling through all of them, it's just like on the D-pad, the down one is the fire dress, the left one is the ice dress, the right one is the, the night dress, so that way you can quickly see which ones you can use, and it's you have to be prepared for it. Yep. I mean, the, the point here, though, is however the interface, whether it's up, down, left, right, or it's right, 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 to scroll through them, mm -hmm. the point is you can switch instantly as if you were yeah. switching between a shotgun and a rocket launcher. You just do it instantly. And I don't think I would mind that very much at all. I think that would be cool. And obviously, some sort of nice effect whenever she switches, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that could be quite interesting. Well, I guess we'll have to figure out as I'm looking with it unlock power she doesn't need to be wearing the dress but she needs to find it to unlock the ability that does make a good sense that yeah but then after that the choice of which dress you're wearing becomes cosmetic which yeah i'm not saying it's a bad i'm not saying it's a bad thing um you know it, you find the dress that unlocks the power for that particular area you're, you're probably wearing that dress predominantly because you're you're in that area or whatever, but um, you go and switch between them if you want, and you don't lose the power. I don't know. I think this is something that we kind of have to decide then, on whether or not the, the powers are... I, I like, again, having the dresses be these big, awesome things that, you know, have a really large effect compared to the weapons that you'll be constantly through. That's just how my take um, I don't know what everyone else thinks. Uh, would be that well how about this we don't have to decide this today yeah. um one of the thing, one of the things one of the things that's often really useful to do in, in these kind of design discussions is let's throw out all the problems and then our subconscious minds are going to sit on these problems and we're going to be thinking about it we're going to be thinking of examples and then we come back to it in the next talk and hopefully in the next talk we will we will have all kind of crystallized the questions and some potential solutions. Uh, and then we can start to work through this a bit more. Because it sounds to me like we we have a really, we've got some really well-defined questions, um, but I don't know that we're necessarily going to hammer out the exact solutions within the scope of this talk today. That sounds like a good idea. I think that's good, yeah. So, And we least... are coming up on the end of the hour. 
Yeah. So maybe what makes sense is we put a pin in this, but we 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 now understand several some several very big questions. Which, by the way, these are questions that have been bouncing around in my head, and I've been waiting for us to have a chance to sit down and talk about them. So um, let's just list out. I think I think we understand the questions to be um, the following. One is. <laughs> Once we acquire a dress, are we able to switch around between that dress or are dresses domain specific? Um, number two, do dresses carry specific dress uh, related abilities? And related to that, if we don't take dresses with us forwards and backwards, do we still continue to carry those abilities? Um, I think those are, those are the two big ones. Any other portion of the question that we, we should throw in there? I think that's really it. It's just uh, looking at people. Environment effect. These are really core questions. Um, so just so you guys know, if I were to try to make the decision, I would make the de if somebody forced me like right now, make the decision. Um, I would go the simple route, and that I believe is dresses per domain with particular powers that the dresses have only when you're wearing them. In other words, uh, domains are designed around dresses, and therefore when you're in a domain, you get some sort of power that's useful in there, and then when you're in a domain, your dress changes, and so does that power that goes with the dress. That's the way I would do it, just because it keeps it simple. It doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. Um, so why don't we come back round to this next week. And then we can also continue through the dresses. And by that time, maybe some of you have scribbled down thoughts on the best way to approach this. Um, and then um, we can try to, to kind of make this more solid then. Awesome. That sounds really good. Yeah, I'm gonna think yeah. about it a lot. Sounds good. Yeah, we have, a, we have a pin on it. We'll put a pin in the dresses pin. for now. Yeah. And, then, uh... and this is a really interesting, I mean, I, I think this is one of those really fascinating topics in game design because it very much is at the core of the type of game we're building. And it's going to very much define the moment to moment way that you interact with the game and the, the mechanics themselves. Exactly. For sure. Right. Okay, yeah. well, let's wrap this up. I'm going to do the, uh, the little. Those of you to um, again links to everything that we're doing can be found in the description below we have been reading from the alice asylum wiki um, which is over on americanmcgee.com uh, in the chat today on voice and text have been our insane children our insane children uh, become insane by following us and supporting us over on patreon so if you would like to go insane and join these crowd design discussions um, then please do consider becoming a patron. I think it's just $5 a month that gets you access to our Discord. Um, yeah. Again, links yeah. for that are in the description below. And uh, I do want to thank our mods and Martin, who put on headphones and saved the day, <laughs> um, and all of our insane children who joined us in the chat uh, for today's session. It was a very interesting conversation. I do look forward to see where we take this next week excellent can i do Good one little stuff. thing before you before we go american go um, for it i wanted to say that we're going to be opening up a area in on wonderland and the discord to go over the tarot we're going to make a tarot troop or troop area so we can get some people who are interested in working with the major and minor arcana and getting some of that started as uh i've been wanting to do that and i think uh Everyone else sounds interesting. Oh. Sounds let's great. Yeah, let's do talk about the uh, tarot cards. Um, there's a lot of cool art getting made around that. And that's another thing. Patreon, you jump into the discussion about how we're going to make and um, produce those uh, tarot cards. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. And uh, we will. I guess see you all again on Thursday for the live stream. Yeah. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Okay. Bye-bye.